What if I told you that every single athlete has the exact same problem when it comes to dunking? We are all the same. And I know that because I was an athlete, right? A young athlete growing up and I had problems. And then I had another problem. Then I had another problem. And then I started teaching people how to jump higher and dunk. And then I started realizing that the same athletes who are just like me at the age that I was back then are having the same issues that I had throughout my entire athletic career. And so I realized that every single athlete actually goes through the exact same things and they have the exact same problems when it comes to dunking. How do you realize that? Because when you look at the reasons an athlete will tell you they can't dunk, first of all, they say the exact same things. And secondly, when you ask them for more questions, you realize that the questions after you hear them enough are all the same. It's all the same questions. It's the same thing stopping you from dunking. And it's the same things that once you learn right now in this video are going to get you dunking right freaking now. And so a bunch of athletes on Instagram asked me their questions about dunking. And I think that these questions might relate to you. And you're probably going to learn a lot about exactly how you specifically can start dunking from these questions. But I got to get this out the way. Number one, the first two questions, can I dunk at five foot six height? And then I think the other one, can I dunk? I am five two. Bro, I'm going to say this. I'm going to answer the height thing one time. I'm sure there's some more height questions. I'm not going to answer it again. Five, two, five, six. First of all, you're probably not done growing. Secondly, if you're focusing on whether you're done growing or not, you're worried about the wrong thing. You're probably not done growing, but even if you are, what can you do about it? You don't have a choice. If you are five, two, you're not done growing in reality. If you are, then I guess you're freaking five, two. What are you going to do about it? How about you set the record for the shortest person to ever dunk at five, two? There's been a 5'3 dunker. In fact, I think there's been a 5'2 dunker. So you wouldn't even be the shortest at 5'2. Ain't that crazy? You limit yourself. You're probably like 5'8 talking about you're so short and there's a 5'2 person who can dunk. 5'3 definitely. I've seen the 5'2 though. But even if there wasn't, why not be the first? It's all just limiting beliefs, bro. And you can't worry about that anyways because that's the dumbest thing to worry about. You're going to worry about the thing that you have no control over when you have absolute control over not how high you are from the ground, but how high you can jump from the ground you have control over. So basically, I don't care what height you are. If your question for me is, is it possible to dunk at my height to windmill to do, bro, it's possible to do anything at whatever freaking height you are. And as soon as you understand that, you will start heading towards that. But for right now, until you believe that, you're not even going to try. The two next questions are, does it take a long time to dunk? And someone asked me for a workout to dunk. I actually do have a workout. It's actually in the description of this video. So it's a free workout. You can go do it right now. But how long would it take you, whether you used a free workout or whatever other freaking workout you can possibly imagine? There's no answer for that because the answer is every single person is different. So I don't know you, the person asking this question. I don't know you, the person watching this video. How quickly can you dunk? I will tell you this, but you can absolutely 100% freaking change your life. You could be a completely different person in a year. And when I say comp a completely different person in a year, so in a month, you can start to notice a big change. In a month, you can do a lot. If you're locked in for a month, you'd be shocked at what you can do. But I always listen. I'm, I'm doing this stuff now, right? I'm proud of myself for doing this. I'm really working hard at growing my social media and helping others dunk. Like, I never thought I would do that. I would watch these videos just like freaking y'all. I'd be like, you can't. I, I would hear all this motor. But I wanted to believe it so bad. And now I understand it's freaking true. And I'm, I'm chasing it harder than ever. But what I'm telling you is true, bro. I know that when you're sitting there and your legs feel like shit and you're sore and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, you, you've been going through some pain. And whether it's, it's a lot of pain or not, bro, having to, having to go through conditioning every day just to be the worst athlete on your team is what you feel like. like that sucks. Like, I'm not saying it's like we're in a war zone, okay? You don't need to be in a war zone for it to be pain. Bro, if you're not, like, if you feel like you're not getting anywhere despite putting a ton of effort in and you actually don't, like, are starting to believe that you're just, like, not one of the special ones, bro, that sucks. And you hear, yeah, boy, you can change, you can change your life and you can transform yourself in a year. You can absolutely start noticing big changes in a month. If you lock in, like, bro, I'm not saying that because I'm just bullshitting you. I swear, bro. Like, that is the absolute truth. And the thing is, is it's compounding. So you might lock in for a year and change your life. But then think about how much easier it is to continue to change your life after you've already done that year. So it's only going to get, you're only going to do more and more. If you train your vertical for a year, then guess what? 12 months from now, after a year's passed, you're going to be like, that first month of that first year that you're training, 
is going to be absolute trash compared to imagine you train for a year and then that next month after you train for a year, you're going to be freaking dialed in. And that's only a year. You're going to be like a pro athlete at that point. And then imagine you would keep scratch. You could go past what the pro dunkers even say is possible. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm nowhere near there yet. I can't even hit my head in the rim. But like, what if it's possible to get your head past the rim? If they can get their head to the rim, like people said was probably impossible that you can get your head past the rim, right? Can you do a 720 dunk? I personally cannot. And this is on like probably like solid seven feet, but people actually absolutely can. There's a 720 dunk that's like really famous. You've definitely seen it on social media. So go check that out. And why not be another one of the guys who can do a 720? Because I think I will eventually. An athlete asked me what it was like growing up for me and whether I had it hard or easy. And one thing I'll say about that is, I mean, I didn't grow up in a war zone. So I'm going to say it's easy. Like I grew up where I was not worried about being dead that day. <laughs> like that sounds best. I mean, realistically, that's pretty easy. You can say like, oh, bro, that's yeah. But in all of history, like that's people who are worried about dying. And I mean, we all are. That's we all are going to die. But in reality, I didn't grow up in a place where there was going to be a bomb exploding at any minute or like the bubonic plague going off or like a civil war going on. So, yeah, I had it pretty easy. Like what was really hard? Like as every kid goes through, yeah, your life kind of feels hard to you as you're growing and that's just growing that process. That's, that's literally just part of the process of being a kid. But the fact that I could chase my dreams, honestly, if I was in a worse position, like if the person who asked that question, I don't know why you're asking, right? Maybe you're in a really bad position. I, I think truthfully, I would just be a better person and be, have done more for others and accomplished more for myself and, and for my family had I grown up in a worse situation. And I understand it's not always true. I don't want to sound like an idiot here, but you know, my parents are alive. They, they raised me the best they could. Had I had no parents, where would I be? I don't know, but I think it's a choice. And so wherever you are as an athlete, wherever you are as a person, I think whether you have good parents or bad parents, you are in a good place or a bad place, you're in danger or you're safe. I don't really think it matters. I think it matters about the choices that you make despite that. You know, if you grew up in a good situation, then it would be disrespectful to your family and to everyone who's in a bad situation not to dunk, not to be the best athlete you can be, not to make the most of yourself. And if you grew up in a bad situation, then you have no reason not to go try to do something else because there's nothing to lose anyways. So it's kind of like whatever position you're in, you don't really have a choice. Like if you're in a bad position, then you have no choice but to... You had nothing to lose. If you're in a good position, you're being disrespectful not to chase your dream as hard as you possibly can. So what choice do you really have? Now, of course, I'm going to say I had it easy, but whether you have it hard or easy, bro, make the choice, make it hard on yourself, push yourself and be someone that you're proud of. An athlete said that basically people are way too focused on two foot jumping rather than one foot jumping. So a few one foot jumping thoughts, you know, it's slightly different when it comes to training. Overall, if you're a two foot jumper, you're dunking off one, but it really you know, you could do like, for example, sprints would help you more with one foot or like, you know, uh, step ups with like driving your knee up really high, like just one leg exercises. And, and also things like practicing your one leg technique, right? Like spending actual time on one foot. So really it's actually, I know that trainers focus on two foot, but it, the technique, yeah, the little details of the technique is different and the little details of the training is a slightly different, I guess. But overall, it's not much different and the same principles apply like a two foot jumper, one foot jumper, like bro, your technique's got to be there. Once your technique's there, that's a huge part of it. And then you can actually train to get stronger within your technique, right? Because if your technique's bad, you could be a bodybuilder, you're not going to jump. The bodybuilder doesn't have the technique, that's why they don't jump, no matter how strong they are. If you've got the technique and the rhythm and you can jump and you, have, you understand how to do it, then, you, then at that point you get the, you, so you get, the, you get the technique right and then at that point you get the, you get the strength up. So it's kind of like a two for our process in that, but it's the same for one foot. Once your, once your one foot technique is perfect, all that you got to do is increase your output, right? And then you can jump higher. Can you still dunk after an ACL injury or any other types of injuries? Yes, absolutely. Personally, I would, that would suck. Like I do not want to do that type of injury. And at some point it's probably going to happen to a lot of different athletes and you can't worry about the, the fear of it happening, bro. You could twist your ankle, you could tear something, you could do, you could get a concussion, right? It's something you're not even expecting. Don't worry about it. You can't, you can't control what type of injury happens to you or spend any time worrying about it. It's just going to destroy you. All you can do is when something negative happens, what are you going to do? Like that's life, bro. Like when, 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 you, when, when shit hits the, when shit hits the fan, what are you going to do about it? That's literally the only decision we have in life because the only thing that's guaranteed is that shit's going to hit the fan. So when that happens, 
what are you going to do about it? And I'd say don't give up on your dream of dunking when the injury happens. I won't and I don't want any of y'all to either. What is the fastest way to increase your vertical? The fastest way to increase your vertical is without a doubt, 100% your jump technique. No matter what, bro, I can't help but give this answer because it is the absolute truth. It is the only way that you could potentially jump like three to six inches higher instantly. And that's very true. If your technique is perfectly optimized, maybe not. If it's not, you could probably jump higher instantly. So that's the fastest way you can jump higher. How do you dunk like that? It looks so easy, bro. I have, I have a secret to tell y'all. A lot of times, like, okay, let's say I do a, a dunk. You see a ton of videos. I did a dunk session, right? The next morning, I don't feel good at all. Like, I could get in the gym and warm up and I, I could still dunk, right? It's not going to feel good. And I'm not going to be like bouncy. I'm not going to be like just punching it. I'll be dunking. It'll be fine. But it's not like you only have, you're, you're, we're all still humans, bro. So in reality, it's not that easy. But like it is, sometimes it does feel like that. Like when I can palm the ball, right? I have the ball palmed. So I don't have to, I just have to get here instead of here. So it's palm. So I just got to go like that. And then I just got to take two steps with the ball palm. All I got to do is get this high above the rim. But the truth is, with two steps, I probably couldn't get this high with the ball, at least with the ball in my hands, right? So it's kind of like, even with me, bro, like I try to be honest about it, but of course I'm on social media. So like most of the, first of all, you're obviously not going to see many misses. And then secondly, you're not going to see the days when I feel as really, really bad. You're not going to notice that as much. I don't, bro, when I get to the gym for a dunk session and then you see the videos and I'm literally like jumping really good. I actually, when I get to the gym, a lot of the time I don't feel like, I feel like, okay, I have, I, you know, I know I'm not sore, but like, I don't feel like I'm just going to fly. Like I get in, I warm up. I'm like, damn, like hopefully I jump well today. And I'm like, damn, okay. I feel a little bouncy. And I just start going for it. I get a few dunks down Then I might miss like freaking 10 dunks. And then I might go on a streak, right? It's momentum. I, I, I get one off the backboard. I really catch it back. Boom. It's a bad day so far, but I punch that. Like it literally just hypes me up. Next 360, boom, punch that shit. Windmill, boom, off the glass, tap, dunk. Like all of a sudden it can happen like that or it cannot. It's, it's, all, it's a mental game, bro. But that's the truth about me dunking easily. It's like, yes, I can dunk easily and it feels freaking amazing. And I want that for you guys too. But in reality, it's not like that a lot of the time. Um, can I dunk easily? Yes. Does it feel easy? Not all the time, really. It's, it's, it's in fact... In fact, I don't want to go in there and warm up and jump. My body, we're all the same, bro. Like, relaxing is nice. <laughs> like, I don't want to relax. I hate it because I just want to go up and do something. But when you're sitting there and you, before you do something, you'd rather not do something, right? Of course, you know you need to. And you do something, you warm up and you start dunking. And then over time, it becomes easy. And then it becomes easier and easier. And then you get fully grown. I'm 23. Bro, it's just a lot of things that play into it. I could dunk at 15, but I wasn't dunking like I could dunk with two steps palming the ball just dunk it really easy kind of like how I can now but I mean I wasn't dunking consistently and that was like eight years ago it's just it's a it's a whole thing bro but the truth is you can have it look like you're flying easily too but you just have to understand that it's not always going to feel like that what is the best way to get rid of knee pain and the answer to that is absolutely two things actually I would say three things actually I would say so you're in a position you have knee pain one you don't want to make the knee pain worse. You don't want to just freaking like, oh, I have an ankle injury. Let me just destroy my ankle. So you rein it back a little bit, right? Naturally. It's just, but this is just natural. Like I, I think we all actually understand the answers to our questions and I do this too. So I'm not blaming y'all. But um, for the specifics, if you have knee pain and you're, and you're struggling with it, maybe don't do as much as, especially if you're jumping, right? It's a lot of force. So it's, if you're doing something else, it's a different story. But if you're jumping a lot, like you got to rein that back. And then once you do that, you don't just rein it back and then just sit there because that's not going to do anything. You rein the jumping back, maybe not quite as much jumping, so it's not quite as hard as in, on your knees. And then you're going to take actual effort to not only, one, recover the damage in the knees, so like strengthen the muscles around the knees or just your muscles and your legs in general or just your whole body as a whole. Just strengthen yourself. And if you're stronger, you'll probably hurt less. And then on top of that, not only can you strengthen, but you can do preventative stuff, like literally specific exercises to help whatever there's multiple types of knee pain right so it's kind of i can't answer it exactly but like tibialis raises if you had shin splints like that would be something that you would do to prevent it uh, in general you could get your whole leg stronger your feet your like your quads your calves every your hamstrings it's all stronger which is going to help your shin splints in this case but the tibialis raises are directly target the shin splints and especially in a preventative way and also a little bit of a strengthening way getting blood flow as well so i would say that um, for knee pain and the other thing you're going to do is 
when you get to the gym and you're about to start jumping or like going hard or hard practice, warm up well, bro. Don't neglect that. And when you finish, just spend like five minutes. It doesn't need to be long. Just five minutes, just go hard, warm up every little muscle just for like 10 seconds. Like it's not even a big deal, bro. And then after, um, after the workouts, when you like, especially when your knee's hurting, or even if it's not, it should do this every time. You have to be doing static stretching. Bro, just watch TV and do some damn stretching. I did this every day for like years, bro. And I don't have any knee pain. So do that. Should I jump off two feet or one foot to get more explosive for a dunk? Basically, I would say personally, in traffic and stuff like that, where there's contact, I'd rather be off two every day of the week. But on a fast break, I'd rather be off one. With, I, I can't jump off one, I never could, so it limited me. But if I could jump off one, I would have been dunking so much. Um, and instead I had to jump off two, so it really slowed me down on the fast break. But two foot in the half court setting, you're way more on balance, you're less likely to be like thrown off because you're like one foot's you know, more this way, two foot's more just kind of straight up. And I don't know, I just feel like you have a lot more strength in general because of the fact that you're having a strong base when you jump versus one foot is more about momentum speed and you don't have a strong base, but it's also way faster. So one foot on the fast break, two foot in half court, I would say. You should teach somebody the secret to dunking in 30 days. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do because actually the first link um, in the description of this video, like literally the link right below this video should be, is gonna be a link that will take you to something that will show you the truth about dunking. And that's basically the secret that all of you need. And I think once you all see that truth, it will significantly help you to be able to dunk ASAP as soon as possible, right? So click that link, subscribe to me if you're not, and I'll see you all in the next video.